Hello and welcome to Simply Intoxicating. The Indian tax regime and Indian tax administrations have been accused of being a dampener for the investment climate in the country. That is why wherever the Honorable Prime Minister and the Finance Minister visit abroad, they have to go extra mile to promise amendment in the regulations, the rules to provide a transparent and a stable tax regime. The Honorable Finance Minister has been constantly on the job to initiate tax reforms, but tax administration reform has been a pending item on his agenda. Although the Tax Reform Commission was set up and it was headed by Dr. Parsati Som, they submitted their reports a few days before the union budget. While presenting the budget, obviously the finance minister did not find enough time to take a steady look at the recommendations and go into the merit of the recommendations, but he made a passing reference that the, the commission report is at advanced stage of examination and will be implemented during the course of the year. Keeping in mind those recommendations are made by Dr. Parasathi Som committee, commission rather, we are going to look at you know some of the key chapters today rather we will focus you know not all the chapters today we are going to touch upon the capacity building and customs administration in India that is one of the key chapters where some substantive recommendations have been made to discuss the various aspects we have domain experts with us in the studio we have Mr. Sumit Dattmadumja the former chairman of the Central Board of Excise and Customs you know, who has done enough stint for, with land customs, air customs, sea customs. You know, he is a bundle of experience where he is going to take us or rather tell us and share with us his experience with respect to various dimensions of tax administration. We have Sonia Gupta, a chartered accountant and a partner in Rajesh Dhingra and Associates. We have Mr. Ishil Sarma, the president of the Air Cargo Agent Association. Then we have Mr. Sok Dhingra. The partner in Asok Dhingra and Associates, a noted attorney who has seen and interacted with the customs over a large horizon of time. So, to kick start the discussion, maybe let me let me ask Mr. Majumdar, sir, what is your preliminary observation about the various recommendations of the commission report? Oh, thank you, Shalindra. Uh, I would say it's a good report in the sense that uh, it is basically compiled all the areas of customs modernization which has been going on if I may say correctly that it would be from the, since 1984-85 when the first computerization was introduced in the customs administration. I am the one who strongly believe that the basic reforms of any tax in administration would be only when you, it is totally technology based. The whole idea is that the point of contact between the taxpayer and tax man that have to be reduced so all the, the uh, all the all the all the suggestions for reforms would have to have some this element in mind uh, when one comes to the ground level that this is the problem people generally face now coming back to this report um, as i said it is basically the work or is, or it is work in progress, you can say. I mean, the already the, from 1985 onwards, the, all those things like risk management, uh, your um, various other things. I mean, in course of the discussion, this will come, you will see that uh, it is basically this report has flagged those issues. And um, um, obviously, there was lagging, there was um, delay in implementation of the projects. So it will help the administration to know all the recommendations, all the all the points uh, uh, which are there in one place, and these are the important issues which you have to have taken up. But one important thing again, which I just touched just now, ultimately it is the implementation and monitoring, because as I said, from 1985 all those things are there. I mean, I, I, when you go across, you will see it. But then obviously there is something wrong with the implementation or the monitoring which perhaps would have to be given more importance. Right, sir. So we will go to Sonia. I mean, I mean, your preliminary, you know, 
prima facie observation about it you know the, the recommendations you have taken a look at it yeah what do you feel as a professional uh, as a professional if i talk about our experiences while dealing with the department uh, if i talk about related party transactions for example like the basic idea is to uh, see whether the transactions between two related parties are at arm's length or not but uh, when we go to the department do our submissions the the primary feedback or the primary feel which we get is they are bound to load i mean they just try to find out reasons to load the value by xyz reasons for example i mean uh, it's it, there could be any multiple reasons as to you know uh, okay. you you do the feel which you get is like the transactions you know uh, the uh, svb they have to be renewed every 3 years right but at times our experience shows that you know the 3 year period has even lapsed and still the uh, renewal order has not been passed so we will come back to those experiences you know after this because these are very specific example where you have probably those things are not reflected in the you know that exactly the exactly yes so we will touch upon those points later we will go to mr sharma sir please tell us your experience See, with the changing scenario in the international market, when we are talking about make in India, we are talking manufacturing, and our Prime Minister is very positive for so many things. But the only thing is that uh, the existing system requires a lot of improvements. Like if we talk EDI, it started 20 years back, paperless, paperless. But today, even today, we have to submit so many documentation. A lot of in physical form. Still, still. Like Prime Minister has rightly said that for 1st April, there will be three papers for export and three papers for import. But whether it is implemented, whether it is there, this is a very important thing that when we are talking EDI, EDI means paperless. That has to be seen that we have to update our technology. Until unless we improve and everything is, I think, directly with the manpower. Manual things should be about. As long as these manual, I think, processing is there, there may be dispute, there may be some harassment, other things are there. But to remove that, we have to make sure that we should have EDI system in Fordersmack. Number two, the important thing is that EDI how? There are so many allied agencies which are not connected with the system. So what is the delay? There is a delay. Delay in transaction code, delay in dwell time, delay in cost. Back to this important point. So we'll go to uh, Mr. Dhingra for a quick observation, sir. See, I'll agree with Mr. Majumda that this is a good report. Essentially, what has been done in the last 20, 30 years in the department, this report has captured that, one. Secondly, this report has also made certain recommendations how to improve the systems. But this report is completely silent on the accountability part. We are dealing with humans. When we are dealing with humans, then humans are tend to make errors. And you know the corruption, all those issues are there. So these are the live issues. We cannot just brush it aside. We have to deal with it. We go to customs, we make the filings, and the assessing officer doesn't agree with it. Now, the options are there that he can pass an assessment order, give us a hearing, we can waive a right to show cause notice. But what he does, he says that I will not allow clearance of your shipments. He does not do anything, sit on it, unless we agree to it. That's not the way. So, the key message that has to be there that this report should deal more with the mindset of the people. They should train their officers to do a delivery to the clients. Every importer and exporter who goes to custom is a client of the department. If you treat them as clients, then probably it is going to be a better administration and where the people not only have to talk about how to deal with the situations in the technical manner, but also how to deal with people when they are suffering. Make sure that people don't suffer, transaction cost doesn't go. Mr. Sharma has already rightly said that transaction cost is going up. Why? Because in spite of saying that this is going to be a paperless transaction, there are transactions which are monitored, which are being in inspected, and inspection is also done in, in a rigged manner as well. So what we are actually looking at it, we should train the people, we should make them accountable, and if they do not do their job, then there should be a reward and punishment as well. So that right. system has to be there, which is where this report is completely silent about it. This right. is more of the training of the people. Like you have seen that in every office there is a sitting charter. This lays down the processes, the timelines for every delivery of service. But is it actually happening? Who is monitoring that? Nobody. Right. So we will talk about, you know, this is, um, rather than, you know, making now more observations, let us go straight to the key recommendations which Dr. Parsothi Commission report has made. To start with, sir, we will go to 
the governance aspect where he is saying the CBEC should immediately commence work on the development of a customs vision and a strategic plan, setting out the strategic goals and implementation strategies. Okay, yeah. So maybe <clears throat> sir, you would like to comment on this. Uh, well, just now Mr. Dhingra talked about the citizen charter and all that it's, these are there, but whether it is being properly implemented or not, so ultimately we come to the point whether it is being monitored that whatever is promised are being delivered or not. Right, sir. Now, you see, on this I would like to mention, I think somewhere I saw in that report uh, in the, that there is a proposal for that uh, there should be a directorate of taxpayer services. And yes. in fact, the, the, the board has set up a committee, let me inform, um, I think uh, if my information is correct, uh, Mr. P.K. Monti, a very yes, uh, good sir. officer. Who DGI knows is looking up, yeah. right, yes. Uh, he has been in the policy making for a long time. So he is heading a committee where he will uh, frame out the, the purpose and objectives of that taxpayer service, uh, tax, uh, taxpayer services services directorate. Yes. directorate. Right. So uh, we will quickly move to a little more uh, substantive issues which uh, Mr. Sarma rightly touched upon. One, one point is he is saying that control paradigm must shift from high levels of pre-clearance introductions to intelligence-led risk-based interventions by exceptions, supply chain management and post-clearance audit. So, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Sharma has uh, really touched uh, <clears throat> the right point at the right time. Uh, the whole idea was risk management system it was that. And risk management system coupled with the self-assessment and which was introduced. I know risk management system has been in, with, in the department. The idea is that there will be a system generated uh, targets on the basis of their own examination, the whatever input was there, that these are the suspect consignments, suspect. Yes. Yes. And there will be inputs from DRI and other investigation agencies like SIB of the custom house and who will also put the target. Yes. Now, if, and the, and the self-assessment, the bill of entry will be filed by the importer or his agent from the office. You will not come to the custom house. He files the bill of entry, it goes through the risk management module and if it is a clean consignment, that means it is not hit by any of the targets, it goes straight out. The agent pays the duty because he has done self-assessment. He knows what right. is the duty, classification, valuation. If it is not hit by even, you know, there's a valuation director has got a valuation database, right. NIDB. Right. So it is that is also in, uh, integrated with this. It is not hit by NIDB. So it goes, he pays the duty. Only point where he comes into contact with the customs man is at the time of taking clearance of the goods, the goods are examined. Now that is essential, but percentage of examination is decided upon the, the sensitivity of the items and the sensitivity of the countries from where it has come. So based on that, there are also guidelines are there. So what I'm trying to say is that already the system says that for a clean consignment, the point of contact between taxpayer and taxman is minimum, only at the point of exit. But what I gather is that in reality it is not happening. Uh, Mr. Dingra, Mr. Yes. Sorry. Please. Sorry. Please go ahead. Mr. Dingra has very rightly expressed that we should have a facilitation department. We should have an approach which should be positive. Our attitude, until unless we change our attitude, we cannot, I think, expect. Our revenue is okay, revenue is very important. But only thing, like he had said, that our customer is our client. We are paying, I think, revenues to the government. We don't want to avoid or hide any, I think, avoid any revenue. But on the other hand, the respect, that is also very important. Yes. We should not be treated like a threep and we should not be treated like other things. We should have some sort of positive attitude right. where we should feel that, yes, we are a citizen of this country and we are treated as a citizen of this country. Okay. That is very important. We don't hide, I think, we want to pay revenue, we want to take flex. But on the other hand, uh, respect is also very important because the concept, now the concept is changing, of system course. is changing, globalization if you are talking, the people at the other end, around the boundary, if they have that feeling that yes, all our goods are examined, this is this, they will not deal with us. I think our government will lose the revenue for an exchange because if that concept goes, the negative I think concept goes overseas, it ultimately adverse impact on our revenue, our economy also. So it is better that we should change our attitude. We should pay respect to the customers. Yes. That is very important. I would right. add two points here. One to Mr. Sharma. If we look at the customs revenue, today customs revenue is 100, 175,000 crore. 
and that to where the custom duty rates have come down drastically over a period of time and in spite of that the custom revenue is going up and up. So that means there are people who are willing to pay custom duty, they are honest taxpayer, they only want certain facilitation that they should not be harassed. Nobody is looking at certain extra facility from the department, nobody is looking at trying to import goods without payment of duty. What they want that they should be given what is the respect due to them. This is what I want to add. That is the second point I want to add is on the risk management system. Risk management as one of the legs has a program on accredited client program, ACP, where the companies which has got a clean record, they are good taxpayers and they have got high turnover of taxes and they are given this accredited uh, client program status where their goods are allowed to be cleared without examination. But what are the conditions for those? Condition number one, there should be no demand pending against the company. Now, if at the drop of hat a custom officer or excise officer, or service tax officer will issue show cause notice, then that, that person or entity is denied uh, accreditation as a ACP. So why this is so? There should be a system that this should be linked to the confirmed demands at the level of state and not at the level of the commissioner. Because most of the time at the department level, departmental and revenue bias is there. We are not trying to find fault with the officers, but we are saying that that is how the system is operating. So, so there is one point related to this also, that the CBEC needs to take a robust and pragmatic view in relation I'll, to the uh, denial of the Okay, okay. I will come to that uh, when, when I uh, cover this. Uh, next, right, this sir. point comes, I will right, explain. And I got Mr. Dinga's point. Right, sir. So my point is there that when ACP is there, it should be given extended to maximum number of taxpayers who have got a clean record. Now, if some shoka notice is issued for certain violation in service tax and that too is pending adjudication, we do not know what is the fate of that. Why that entity should be denied ACP accreditation? Okay. So this is... This you is say they have been given this ACP on their past performance. They have done a good thing. They have been doing the best. And they have nowhere violated anything. And that is why they are called client, which is credited agents. So those should be, I think, respected. Right. So we have one more point here, sir, where, you know, the recommendation is the CBEC needs to build capacity for more meaningful contribution to trade policy based on credible research analysis. So CBEC has something to do with the, the trade See, policy? Yeah, yes, why not? I think once we are having like, because we, have we are doing certain... We have Commerce Ministry doing with this. So do you think that they can really make some meaningful contribution here, the CBEC from its own side? See, they can make contribution because like we are doing exhibition things. Exhibitions are coming, exhibitions are going. Okay. okay? And in exhibitions, if the goods are retained, I think they are not, I think, given priority in clearance or processing. Naturally, there will be a problem. Now, when you call the goods back, you have exhibition at Frankfurt, you have displayed everything, whatever the rest of the goods you bring back. So, when the goods are brought back, there are a lot of if and but. but sir, I'll, if I'll, 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 oh, sorry. You can. Okay. Let me add to Mr. Sharma. Foreign trade policy is a policy statement of the Government of India under FTDR Act. But this is in real life implemented by the customs. So, unless custom department and particular CBC is aligned to the Commerce Ministry, this policy cannot be implemented. And whatever vision or policy statement of the Commerce Ministry or the Government of India is there, fails at the end of the Finance Ministry. So, what needs to be done? The CBC already has got a director to export promotion, and which is headed by, uh, I don't know who is the, I mean, the nowadays the DG of that. But I understand that good work is being done by that directorate and which is now coordinating a lot of efforts with the, with the Commerce Ministry bringing in the, in the policies, bringing in the coordination between the two departments. Like the policies announced on, uh, on 1st of April and same day the custom notification were issued. Invariably in the past there has been a time lag, yes. a few days, few months and like for Served of India scheme for I think more than six months there was no corresponding notification giving benefit under the, uh, under the uh, service tax or the customs. Right. So there was no, I mean, implementation measures were there while policy was there. So for so, a change, even the minister appreciated and rather uh, Commerce Secretary and DGFT, both of them were uh, you know, the profusely, you know, thanked the Revenue Department this time, you know, when they were unfolding sir, that uh, foreign there, policy. But there is some point that, of course, the policies are there. The implementation of that at various airports depends on the individual commissioner. 
That's you see, that creates that unnecessary I'll just touch situation. on this point. Right. Uh, uh, because if you interpret that thing, he's <laughs> taking on his own way. He changes, somebody else comes, he has a different view. Like in okay. township and other things, there are different, I think. We should have, I think, state one. Right. So that's he's talking about sir, the cultural aspect yes. of the... No, I'll tell you. That. Now, what, so I, coming back to the recommendation, whatever is there. So my point is that this is already there. It's going on for a long time. The trade policy before it is finalized, the, wherever the customs is involved, the customs duty the will be involved, it has to be in consultation. Because ultimately, the to give examples, for example, DEPB. Right. So DEPB ultimately, it is a de customs department is giving the exemption, that giving the facility. So without consulting, it cannot happen. So right. this is already there. So there's nothing new that uh, they should coordinate with each other. But let me, sir, I mean, we have been speaking so against the department so far. Let me add that the department has done a good job in giving drawback to the exporters. Now, I think within uh, 72 hours or 72 hours, 72 hours 90 percent drawback is carried to their account. So this is a good thing. Let's appreciate yes, that as well. Yes. If the department continues with this kind of process, I don't think we'll be talking about it against the department. We would be appreciating their efforts. Again, you know the the the, the main point why you are praising the drawback department now because everything has been as a systematic what way is it has been put in the system. So discretion is minimum. That contact between the taxpayer and taxman. I, I harp on keep on harping on that point. Once these things are done, automatically you and here. In spite of the system saying that there should not be any contact, but then still, as you have been saying, there has been problems. So there the problem of monitoring. The superior supervisory officers are not properly monitoring. Sir, that. there are some other technical problems. There is a positive attitude, like if you go to iSkate, if you go to DG, I think, system. They are working very hard. They are very positive. They would like to look after you. But only thing is, they say we are shortage of stuff. Number two, the technology we should be upgraded. The finance, I think, the infrastructure, which is not, I think, there. So government has to, I think, like this, it is very important that the manpower in customs, we have to see that that manpower should be provided. Sir, and before we take a short break, sir, we, I would like to touch upon this small point where, you know, the recommendation is the customs should move away from the gatekeeper approach. So, I mean, is it true that, you know, even after having invested so much in technology, introducing RMS, SCP, so many other kind of risk management system. Mr. Sarma, perhaps we would like to comment on this. Sir, once the goods are cleared, the role of the custom is no more. I, I feel that. Like because then I think the custodian, the goods, the gate pass is issued, or the goods are handed over to the custodian. But it is only a, remains with the person concerned. Like we ready for carriage, we good cargo to custodian, and custodian return to the airline. So their role is nothing. See, the internationally, the concept now is that the, you, know, the, you must make a distinction between court clearance and the, the, the you must make a, sorry, the must make a distinction between the clearance of goods and clearance from customs. Okay. So the, the court clearance means the court thing, there's a goods in the supply chain. The goods should be cleared, but you customs, you keep on doing your other checks. That is not essential to do. So that is why. This, this system is there and that's why they say we have brought in the, the department has brought in the PCA, post clearance audit. And the post clearance audit itself has got two elements. One is that they've got, one is that they do the transaction basis, the uh, post clearance things. One is called PCCV and that is transaction based. And other is on site. On site is more comprehensive. On PCCV, they pick up only one consignment and then go into it. Goods have gone. So this is already there. Again, I mean, as I uh, am finding it, as a former customs man, now a retired person, that the main problem is in implementation. Because the, the what I'm hearing there, I've, I've been hearing it earlier also. So it is this thing is already there, that um, the, the, the core clearance should be given, and uh, the uh, PCA will take care of it. A PCA, they have already implemented but obviously it has not reached the final stage of implementation. Right, sir. So on this note, we will take a short break and after the short break, we will touch upon other key recommendations of Dr. Parasuthi Commission report.